Hello and welcome to Talking Bottom. This week we're going to be talking about the film or the bottom movie, Guest House Paradiso. I'm Ange Johnson. Well, you're no, you're sorry. Pearson now, is I'm it? Pearson, yeah. yeah. Fuck, yeah. Sorry. And you sounded unsure as I well. Very, oh, well, I don't oh, know, do I need more of an intro? Or do, you do our names, don't we? Do yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm Ange Pearson. I'm Matt Brooks. And I'm Paul Tanter. And yes, the bottom movie. But it wasn't the bottom movie, but then it was the bottom movie, right? You all know about this? Uh, I think some people have a different DVD cover or something around different regions that it's called the bottom movie. It says it on the DVD or VHS. I think yeah. in Sometimes. various... I've looked for some posters of this on eBay. In like the Australian and European posters, it's got very prominently the bottom movie. Mm-hmm. But you get the impression they kind of leaned away from it slightly here. But that kind of is even played out in the actual film itself. Their surnames have changed, Stephen mm. O'Donnell's playing a different character. It's still Richie and Eddie, but it's a different universe, isn't it? It's a slightly different so, universe well, that we're in. So, if that is what they are saying, and that is the truth, yeah. I feel it is them, and this is some mm. sort of it's, witness relocation thing that has happened or something, because they are their, their souls are the same. So, I think them. it's just simply that... They are in a bit of a parallel situation, which yeah. is what Aid and Rick wanted to achieve with this, it, isn't it? Because they'd already done Hooligans Island, moving to an island, well, so we've already stepped out of the flat. So I wonder if this is a rights thing, in that this isn't a BBC made film. Mm. The stage show, presumably for live performances, they can do what they want, but in terms of actually recording something else, I wonder if the BBC had some kind of right I've over never the characters. I thought of that. That could very possibly be true. Yeah, it's a very good point, one way to sidestep it. And very easily sidestep yeah. it by having essentially, it's literally the same characters who wear the same kind of clothes and have the same first names, but will change the surnames and get a gag out of one of them as well. But then you can't have the other characters from that universe. I really would have liked to have seen a bottom movie set in their kind of dystopian Hammersmith where dogs end mm. up in kebab shops <laughs> and gas men get killed and there's police brutality. Like a kind of fucked up dystopian with and I, mm. you know? Yeah. I realise that with British films, there's a certain tendency... I don't know if it's become a bit of a cliche that... Show it all grim looking shit. Oh no, I was going to say that you take your characters and you send them on, on holiday. holiday. Yeah. yeah. Or you have them out of their comfort zone slightly. I wonder if this is because either you need a bit more of a storyline to extend it to 90 minutes rather than 30, or by the time writers are writing a film version of a sitcom, have they exhausted all of the scenarios that they wanted to do in the home? So now, ah, uh, what do we do? We'll, we'll think up something. Well, you, that, yeah. yeah, you say that, but they're obviously extrapolating on the idea of the, you know, home Tello, Paradiso, you know, Splendido, you know, they've done it, haven't they, in yeah. Series 3? You, they've taken the them to the island of the hooligans. Stuff? Say yeah. again? Have you seen the behind-the-scenes stuff? Yeah, There's a really that, good yeah. documentary that was on DVD, it's on YouTube. Yeah, and Aid says that it was an inspiration while they were on tour, yes. staying in different kind of hotels that weren't as shit as for this, the, obviously. For, for the third tour, right? Basically, yeah. what Rick or Aid said is when they were doing the Hooligans Island tour, Bottom would come so popular, they weren't just doing one day... Mm. Uh, at one place and they'd basically be doing a week in each venue so they'd be staying in hotels a bit more Mm. and while doing that they could relax a little bit and they just started to form the germs of an idea of them being in a hotel and stuff and it is do obviously you, faulty tower that's the do there. you think actually that they were wanting to do a bit of a faulty towers a little bit i think richie because they must love that, that appetite show. really well doesn't he the snobbery the mm. fake snobbery stuff that's great there and it's I, very basil faulty yeah. a lot of the stuff that he comes out with like you it, know it's very basil faulty but it's also very richie so you can yeah. see what the similarities between richie mm. and basil faulty are being but, mean to the guests and yeah. judging them for having sex Be- the staff, that yeah. kind of thing. But yeah. I do think you are kind of already setting yourself up to fail. You're hamstringing yourself quite a lot by going specifically for this scenario when mm. it's been done so well already by Faulty Towers. Right, so and not even as a film. They'd ever attempted no, a Faulty right, Towers right. film. Oh, there was an idea for a Faulty Towers film I've heard John Cleese talk about. So that's quite funny. Oh, really? It's just basically the very beginnings of the new idea. He was going to Barcelona for something when Manuel was in trouble or something, had to go there. (laughs) And on the plane, it got hijacked, and then basically Basil gets involved and stops the hijacking. What, does the entire thing take place on a plane? I don't know, I don't know, this is just the beginning of it. He stops the hijacking, and then they're like, well, thank you so much, you've saved the day, but we need to land now. Um, somewhere else to because it's dangerous. He's like, no, I want to get to Barcelona, and then puts oh. the gun on him. No, go to Barcelona. All oh, right, okay. I've, never, okay. Never, never, t- I've never heard him talk about that. Yeah, it's that on. It fun. might be on his <laughs> wife's alimony tour um, <laughs> DVD uh, stand-up thing he did. I saw that maybe. live, but I don't have blanked that. No, but it's, yeah, that it's him saying it somewhere on uh, some sort of mm. interview. Um, yeah, uh, it tickled me, but yeah, because he'd be trapped on the plane, wouldn't he? So it would still work. Mm-hmm. But yeah, because there's a direct reference to Manuel slash they call him Pascal, don't they? Yeah, right, yeah. 
where we so, were a little bit yeah. all over the place. We set up the Are we going to do the plot? Background. Oh, uh, fuck me. I haven't... Uh, well, given... Let me do the plot off the top of my head. Rich and Eddie run a hotel. There you are. It's the there worst hotel in the world. <laughs> yeah. They're next to a nuclear, I love the nuclear power plant yeah. and they give everyone food poisoning. Yeah. Let me ask you something about the setting for this. Do you feel like this was an appropriate setting for a bottom movie? Bearing in mind some of the live shows have gone slightly bigger world. I know in the behind the scenes, Aid actually says he feels that Rich and Eddie work better when they're indoors. He mm -hmm. says when they're in their, their own world, but when they're indoors, he said. So in other episodes of the show, they've done things where they go outside, Women in Common, or they go to the seaside, to a hotel, that kind of thing. And they're leaving Hammersmith in the confines of their flat. In this case, what they've tried to do is sort of condense the universe into one location. Mm. You're outside occasionally. And it still looks like a massive shithole with yeah. nothing around. So but, it's... but I feel like if you're doing a film version, you should try and do things a bit bigger and sort of expand your universe a bit. It opens quite sort of promisingly of like, oh, AIDS outside, he's travelling around. And stuff. Yeah, that's all very good. But then once he comes back, everything is there within the hotel, which I realise is then keeping it within sort of sitcom format of, right, everything's in the one place, everyone's trapped together. When I was watching it, I was very aware that, okay, they've got six sets that they've built and that's the confines of it and it just felt i know they had a three million pound budget but it sort of looked and felt a bit cheap in that regard it you feels know? small yeah because they're they're closed in yeah but that is the format for a sitcom but as you say for a feature film yeah they could have gone a bit bigger well what i want to say about this i saw it in the cinema when it came mm, out me when too. i was 15 years old yeah. i hadn't seen it again so i just remember being disappointed with it yeah. and then it just basically flopped and yeah. everyone I know just kind of had bad vibes with it, so I've gone at least 15 years now just assuming that yeah. it's rubbish. I'm pretty similar. I watched it in cinema yeah. and found it a bit OTT with the vomit. Yeah. Once right. it gets to the vomit bit, I enjoy. I, I really ah. enjoyed the first half an hour. Ah. And then on the rewatch at home again, once I got the DVD, yeah. I still didn't love it. Oh, no. So okay. that was the last time that I watched it. And But re-watching it this time, I found a new affection for it. Yeah. Most I, definitely. I I'm... I, I'm astonished mm. at how much I was like right. I fucking loved it yeah. actually I, I even say like because my uh, memory of it was so low I had zero expectations yeah. watching it so oh, it's going to be a bit of a chore and the attention to detail mm -hmm. is great the way it's shot is so yeah. impressive there's so many odd little close-ups I love it when something mm. is better than it needed to be mm. I, you know I, that's, I, do you think that's thank, thanks to a directing a little bit I he think does do a good job, yeah. he does mm. uh, he does do a good job in some regards. I think Eddie has not much to do in the film. Yeah. And I think Rick is great. He's fucking great in some scenes yeah. and stuff. And I do feel that's because Eddie is directing Richie there. Mm -hmm. And then he managed to direct himself. He kind of... There was less going on there. It must be very difficult to direct yourself, mustn't it? It yeah. is, yeah. <laughs> like, no, from a, just from a practical perspective, time is money when you're making a film. Everyone's on the clock. Mm. And so if you're acting in a scene and then at the end of it, you've got to do playback to have a look at it and mm. see if you're happy with it, that just adds time to the day. So there may be a certain practical element of once they knew that Aid was going to direct it, okay, we'll lean things slightly less on Eddie, a bit more on Richie and a bit more on the guests. You know? Well, heard. they said the last rewrite was all on Aid because yeah, obviously Rick was recovering yeah. from the quad bike accident. That's right. Yeah. And Rick jokes that that's also coincidentally when they decided that Aid was going to direct yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> making of. Which I wonder whether that is true or whether that was in the well, pipeline heard, much sooner. I've heard that it was going to be both of them directing and then he, um, Rick, stepped back a little bit because of the head injury Oh, that's situation. interesting. Well, that would make sense if they were yeah. both doing it, yeah. So I remember I saw this in the cinema as well and up until recently it was the lowest attended cinema screening I'd been in in that myself and a friend were in there with four other people. There were six people in there for this screening. Why did it flop oh. though? It didn't make any sense. But British movies do, don't they? Like most, like certainly from the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it also, name a really successful it, one. It also didn't like really... Like really top what, four oh, weddings and a funeral. Oh, well, uh, yeah, well, well, that's lo like, like comedy. Yeah. Lock, like stock. proper comedy. Uh, uh, Kevin and Perry go large, <laughs> which was shot by the same DP, uh, same cameraman as Guest House Paradiso. Mm -hmm. It was a thing right after it. And okay. also uh, what we found out from... Ed By might have directed this, but then Adrian Emerson was going to direct Kevin and Perry Go Live. That's right. Then he and then he stepped aside because he was yeah. going to do Guest House so Paradise. There's, so there's a link between those two films. So okay. sort of recommended to Harry. Cameraman. So yeah. sort of recommended to Harry Enfield that oh you know you should get uh, Ed By to direct mm. this. And was yeah. Kevin and Perry Go Large a box office hit? I think it made yeah. its money back. I think did it's it? relatively succeeded. I and what it. happened with? See, I don't even really know. Like, what did this film lose a lot? Oh, if it cost three million to make, it would have lost money. There's no way this film made its money back. I don't mm. think. I think eventually you might have done... Even on with... DVD sales? And... Maybe. I mean, I bought 
I went to see it in the cinema, very much like yourself. I kind of enjoyed the first 30 minutes, maybe. I mean, it Do you remember how weird it was really it, weird when you first watched it, wasn't yeah. it? Like, why are they in a hotel? What's it, going on? It peaks, I think, with the fight, with all the bollock yeah. crushing and the and the pencil up the arse and that kind of thing. And then it just kind of like levels off and goes downhill after that. I think Rick's bollocks are a bit too big. Well, Richie's bollocks they are, are a bit quite too big. big they? But had they been kicked or hit prior to that? I don't think no, they no, no. Had. no Only... I know what you mean, but I mean, could that have been a swelling? Oh, thing? no, no. Mm. I think this was before they were hit. But I bought the VHS because uh-huh. it was a VHS then and then DVD out of some kind of sense of duty and obligation. Yeah. Bought it, didn't watch it for ages, mm. then watched it, was reminded that the film wasn't that good. I will say... Kudos to anyone who writes, makes, mm. and distributes a feature film. It's an undertaking in itself. This must have been a real kind of pinnacle dream for Rick and Aid to must finally have been get so upset that it their flops. film made. Their oh, own Rick films. Him. Obviously, yeah. Rick had done Drop Dead Fred. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, but well, like, for their own stuff to be mm. put put onto cinematic I mean, viewing, like, it must have been a real dream come true. Considering that in the behind the scenes, they said, what was it, Rick said that when they wrote the first draft and they did a read-through, it was like three hours, 45 minutes, yeah. and they cut it down to two and a half hours, yeah. which is just the best gags, as they said. The film now comes in 85 minutes. I wonder what they threw away. Yeah, what I think they should have done, uh, I think they cut away a bit too much because the kitchen fight, I think, is fantastic, yeah. but goes on a bit too long. And mm. they a little bit less is more with some of the so, elements, you know, and then just had more jokes and stuff. You do know? you find it so well shot? The violence is almost too perfect and therefore not as funny. Well, I think the violence in the kitchen fight is mm. brilliant, yeah. but then you never have the a imprint right, of his face. Right, <laughs> yeah. it's great. That fight, yeah. bearing in mind they have it in the first sort of 15, 20 minutes, I yeah. thought, ah, they're starting off with this, things are going to ramp up. You never really that's better the best that fight. fight. In, yeah, the best fight there's moments film. of yeah. violence in it, and there's good little bits in it, like candle in the eye and that kind of thing, mm. but nothing ever tops it. And you'd think, oh, well, in the final third, we will top it. And they try and top it with bigger stuff of like the vomiting and, yeah, sure. you know, that kind of stuff. I feel like it kind of peaks at that moment and then kind of goes downhill. The film's less than 90 minutes long, but even though they're giving it their absolute all, and there are some great gags and some great physical moments, it doesn't sustain for the entire time. And that's quite odd, considering that we've seen them do stage shows where they sustain it for yeah, the entire time. Yeah, but they time. can break and they can um, talk to the audience and ad-lib and stuff, and that's Ex- a big difference. Which is, there's, there's two big differences mm. with this. One is that they can't break and look to the audience and kind of like... Actually, just, what I just said? Yeah, to, sorry, to sorry. Finish. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to... Yeah, okay. <laughs> But the other thing is, when they're on stage, it's just the two of them. Mm. You can't do that for a feature film. There's no way a distributor will just take them two on film for the entire thing. So you have to populate it with other people. Mm. But what they've done in this instance is, and in the TV show, a lot of the people they interact with are people of the bottom universe. In this film, Mm -hmm. apart from the chef, everyone's a normal person. Yeah. So they're doing that no, thing the of... the guys from the radiator plant right at the end are oh, all they're... quite fine. And Mrs. Fur. Oh, oh, okay, she's... Exce- Fox. she's... Is it, what is it, Fox Fur? Fox Fur. Yeah. She's eccentric. You could generally find people like that in everyday life. She's she's a piss take of the Faulty Towers old women kind that of, live yeah. there. And yeah. But a little bit like Major as well, the old women and yeah. Major merge into one. Yeah, totally, because they're residents at the and, hotel. And piss heads yeah. as well. Yeah. I, I think the other characters that they're interacting with in the main are normal people. Yeah. You're Bill Nye, you're Simon Pegg, it's normal members of the public in the sitcom we get that very rarely such as the gas man as an example of a normal person yeah you're right they're absolute lunatic just world to play off of, like they're they? they're kind of joined by fellow lunatics yeah. apart from like you say the gas man you know because rottweiler even is an yeah. absolutely <laughs> mad caricature of a of a skinhead isn't yeah. it? i know what you're saying and that is one of the problems isn't it when you're no longer trapped and people mm. come into this universe and they bring in the movie star and then yeah. they're, they're very funny what movie G- oh, gina carbonara and right. then her f- <laughs> boyfriend Gino Bolognese yeah a very, a very early younger Vincent Cassell pre he, sort he of just, uh, fame been doing, no, he, I think he wasn't quite pre-fame he just done something good and he was a right, little okay. bit of a coop and getting in yeah, mm. so yeah he's so over the top in this but yeah. do you wonder whether he was a way? fan of Maybe. Rick stuff oh, I don't know about that it comes across so clearly in the behind the scenes Simon Pegg is enamoured with them you mm. see this joy and happiness that he's around they're like asking questions about the young ones and stuff mm. between yeah. them. that's so lovely that's uh, but did, did you, you ever read his that? book um i tried to <laughs> yeah i read i read simon pegg's book oh no i've not uh, read it his well, autobiography yeah. and uh-huh. he, he's slightly negative about rick oh really he just i mean i'd have to go back to read it verbatim so yeah. i'm quoting from memory but it's essentially that he says that rick was always trying to kind of overly please everybody else right um, i know i, I think yeah. I you know, know, he was always he, trying to entertain yeah. the crew and everyone, yeah. and in, he kind of like insinuates that there was a whiff of okay. desperation about Rick, like yeah. always trying to be on. 
in the Lord of but Misrule. I, I highly disagree with, yeah. with that. But obviously I didn't work with Rick. But every time you met Rick, he was an absolutely was amazing funny, character. Funny, yeah. He was always trying to make everyone feel like the biggest person in the room, even though he was. In, in, but, the, in the Lord of Misrule documentary, after Rick's death, yeah, Simon Pegg appeared in that yeah. and talked about making guest house Paradiso. And he sort of, he didn't go as far with that. He said that Rick was would do a take and then wonder why people weren't laughing, why the yeah. crew wasn't laughing. He always wanted the yeah. reaction. Right. But um, I don't think, I mean, maybe it wasn't intended as a negative thing. There was something it great. it read to me like a negative thing. There was something great in that behind the scenes in that Rick was doing a line. First part of his line was on camera, on the actual film camera. Then I think he moves off and the old lady's on it. As he delivers the line, he's now d- delivering it right down the barrel of the behind the scenes camera. Brilliant. So he's still performing yeah. for someone there. That's yeah. great. Did you see on the, some of the behind the scenes stuff of Rick Mao, it's one of the funniest <laughs> lines I've ever heard from him, uh, some of the stuff. Uh, maybe that's going a bit far, but he's just... You can see that sort of charm we've been trying to entertain stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's a nice bit when they're talking about the stunt men and stuff. It's like, oh, yes, Eddie's got a stunt man. I don't. I don't need one. All those people dressed as me, they're my fans. <laughs> <laughs> they're just friends of mine who yeah. come along and they're my fan club. That's or right. Yeah. And I think he says oh, that Aid obviously didn't give him a stunt. He didn't want me to have a stunt man because yeah. he thought yeah. it was going to be Poncey and Girly or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> so charming. And there's some of Rick's best performances I've ever seen in this film. Yeah. Little elements, little stuff yeah. here and there. I was so surprised how much I liked it the second time watching it. Yeah, I think it starts really promisingly. The first four or five minutes is, apart from Rick making a bit of noise as he wakes up, it's essentially, it starts like a silent movie for both of them. It's all physical comedy. Mm. So the noises at the beginning are just him stirring and sort of thing. But yeah. I thought, oh, it's a, it's a mas- masturbating gag again, like, like yeah. the uh, live shows. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah. So the, cleaned it up a little bit for the opener you, of the film. Yeah. Did you notice uh, the viz on the I did, floor yeah. of uh, Eddie's? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Cool. Eddie doing the bike stuff a bit like Buster Keaton. Mm-hmm. Richie doing the stuff in the bedroom, which if it was a Mr. Bean movie with Ron Atkinson, everyone would be saying a a genius thing. physical comedy. Mm-hmm. But because it's Rick and Eddie, uh, Rick and Aid, people are probably a bit more sneering about it. But the whole him waking up indecision over identical cardigans. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, oh, I remember piercing right, his him nipple. piercing his nipple, but then with the blood spurting yeah. out. That. <laughs> I I remembered that. That's one of the few things I remembered. And on the rewatch, I'm like, oh, he pierces his nipple later. But oh, it's then. I yeah. didn't remember it being that soon. And yeah. fucking belly laugh. Yeah, yeah. Because it's so early. It's you too s- early for that sort of thing. And so that's why it works. You see that and think, oh, no, this is going to work. We're in good hands. So unfortunately, the rest of it probably doesn't fulfill that quite so much. But you're right. It could be played out without any kind of sound at all, couldn't yeah. it? And still be humorous yeah. and, like and funny it. and sets both the characters up. Yeah. Yeah. You understand yeah. both the people. You understand, oh, he's people, a bit of a fiddler yeah. um, schemer and he's a Ponzi yeah. fake. Or like you see a, f- a photo of him in Richie's room like with a very crudely pasted over <laughs> yeah. thing yeah. so he's oh he's a fantasist he's a liar that sets out very well yeah, but some people might have watched this film without having never seen some people Bottom would have. as a sitcom some right, yeah. partners would have been dragged along to the cinema drugged along Dra- yeah the, the past <laughs> tense drugged along. dragged yeah. drug Dragged. Dragged, yes. Anyway, they could have been drugged as well. <laughs> drugged and dragged along. <laughs> they really want to have a good time. The contraptions that Eddie has with like this record playing and stuff reminds me of Doc Brown, that sort of thing. That's the future, ah, you know those. So, oh, like, really? I think I'd go even further back. Like, I think this is, like you say, it's a silent movie almost, yeah. but it's, I yeah. think they're really going for the kind of carry on 1960s feel. <laughs> a little bit. From well, the off. I mean, what? the fact that they've got um, Fenella, what's her name? Fenella Fielding. Fenella yeah. Fielding cast in it. I mean, she was in Carry On Screaming and all those kind of things. One thing that did make me think of the carry on films was the moment and it's in the opening sequence when Eddie's on the bike they sped the footage up to try mm. and make it look like he was moving faster which never really works in film and they always did in carry on movies yeah. usually when like a, a car was coming around a corner or Jim sure, Dale sure, was sure. going down the stairs in a bath or something yeah. like that never really works in that regard but that did... they do it with Eddie with the military trucks don't they, they? Yeah. slow it down yeah, yeah. that's which true I think was worse yeah. Yeah. they should have just got that <laughs> but that sequence they, there's, so, there's a couple of things wrong with that sequence that really bother me especially as it's the one of the first things you see in the movie which is that they reuse several shots right so you, you cut away from it to go back to Richie and then when you come back Eddie's still in the midst of the convoy mm. and they reuse several of the shots that but were the different angles no no same yeah. shots they oh, reuse okay. but do you think all, that was to try and make it out like there's more trucks than they actually I, had for some reason in the edit they went ah oh, we need to go away from Richie then come back so mm. they tried to elongate it by mm. making it look like there was a long convoy also the problem is as Eddie approaches it and reacts to oh god there's vehicles approaching he's very clearly got a different 
background to what to what the trucks have. I know they're mm. on the same area on the Isle of Wight filming it, but Eddie's got sort of like flat hills. Mm. Oh, no, flat hills. Eddie's got... <laughs> <laughs> right, what Eddie doesn't have is two steep banks up the mm-hmm. side of the road, which is right. what the trucks have. So there's an instant continuity error, sure. which annoys me. So did you notice when he finally gets to the hotel and you see the nuclear plant next mm. to them? Yeah. The bad CGI, mm. weird frame rate model of the hotel as well. All that looks that that does look nap. But did you notice the nuclear power plant has two round orbs and a long tower? Yeah, it looks like a cock. Yeah. Oh no, I hadn't yeah. noticed that. Actually. It's definitely uh, phallic. Yeah, right, right. Spewing yeah. Uh, smoke into <laughs> the air. Yeah. The VFX on this are sketchy part, to I say the least. Do you not think they're meant to be shit though? No, no, I, don't, no. I hate. Do you think that that's an no. excuse? No, I, yeah, yeah. I, I think they're kind of meant to be a bit. There's, shit. There's I mean, a, yeah. Either VFX, so where they've created the hotel on the cliff with the nuclear power plant mm. in the background that looks a bit dodgy but then mm. also later on there's some very dodgy and obvious miniatures used the, the frame rate's wrong isn't it stutters where it, it looks like they've slowed it down a bit or yeah the frame rate's wrong but also things like at, towards the end when that big ball of vomit the indiana yeah. jones style thing crashes out the window when it cuts to outside it's quite obviously a miniature uh-huh. it, it looks like that scene in Beetlejuice when we're mm. in the miniatures you know yeah. but where that they've made a feature of it that opening sequence with Aid on the bike I think suffers a little bit from a similar thing that some other sequences had which you kind of referenced earlier Matt which is they live in it a bit too long Cause, yeah because how expensive it would well, be to do it they want to get yeah. the money was worth so, right like the bike bit I feel like it just takes a bit too long the thing with Simon Pegg being hoisted up I think takes a bit too long Richie in his underwear they just ring it a bit too long you know sure they, cut, they bring yeah, that underwear they... too long <laughs> I, know, I know what you're saying but again they're trying to make a feature film aren't they of, of yeah scenes. when they cut stuff at so much out though but I suppose yeah. they had you know, th- they had a, an original draft of 3 hours 45 minutes I know mm. then when you're keeping particular gags to maybe they cut out too much I maybe I, but yeah then... I think maybe they did I would have liked to see the Manuel character and I would have liked mm. to see a dynamic of another status level of them bossing of them. around staff properly yeah. instead of yeah. just you know I don't I get on with the, the chef kitchen, and yeah, all that, yeah. I would have liked to see a bit more of the chef he goes he before dis- you want him to right? he disappears uh, and you kind of feel like maybe he would have been a character they mm. could have played off a bit more <laughs> his, I- his hair all the like hairy shoulders and patches and yeah. stuff the makeup on that looks <laughs> hair, great yeah. well horrible but Did- you know what I mean yeah so a lot of people I'm sure will have noticed that that's Spud Gun but we yeah. better make shall we say it because that's Steve O'Donnell isn't it mm-hmm. yeah so some people might not realise that that was actually Stephen O'Donnell do you think they asked other people to be in it and they couldn't no I think oh, that right. would be a night though just having me in it I think that's it yeah because you could easily physically he's, he suits that part doesn't he I think mm. but having him in it playing another role does it just remind you that oh well, it's not bottom it's not Spud Gun, and there's not going to be a Dave Hedgehog or, or maybe he'll turn up later and then he doesn't you know yeah I know what you mean it's kind of putting them in the universe but not mm. yeah it's a way of showing this isn't mm. he's in it at the, mm. he's in it at the beginning then disappears and I just wonder if they might have benefited from him and one or two other oddball bottom universe-esque characters kind of being there in the background for them to play off so do you think Mr. Nice, aka Peg, and Bill Nye, he's characters are just basically a bit too similar? Yeah, a little bit. Just the bit. outraged oh, Yeah, did, a little bit. Did I... I might have missed this, but I got to the end of my notes on the rewatch when people turned up at the end going, where the fuck did Bill Nye and, the, and his missus disappear to? Did they check out? And yeah. I missed it. Bill I know, Nye, he gets so annoyed and then it's like, oh, I'm a, he's a black belt, you know. Right, and uses punches the, him. The amazing black belt skill of a punch to the face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's no black belt skill needed <laughs> no, for that. Yeah. And then when he wakes up, he's like, oh... Have they checked out? Mm. And he says all the guests have gone. Yeah, oh, right, have okay. they paid? And Eddie's like, uh, no, yeah, he's pocketed right. the money. So someone's yeah, yeah. got something from someone. So yeah, they've left while well, Richie's unconscious. That is a stand. Right, okay. <laughs> I mean, no, now you say it, I remember saying that, but I remember getting to the end thinking, where the fuck's Bill Nye and the, and the woman from Shaun of the Dead? There's three Shaun of the Dead character, yeah. uh, actors in the film. Do yeah. you, do you think Kate that, Ashfield. Do you think this is the second best British movie that stars Simon Pegg, Kate Ashfield and Bill Nye where the ending features the authority showing up to contain a major hazard? Yes. Yeah. yes. And do, do you, you think <laughs> this is in the same universe as Storm of the Dead and what? the fish poisoning is the thing that set Maybe. off the zombie uh, incident? Because, if you notice... Simon Pegg is in this, yeah. but I he's younger. That. But he's younger because right. of the way time works. Yeah. Linearly, <laughs> and this was younger. set before *Storm of the Dead*. Do you think that if Simon Pegg hadn't been in this film, 
Kate Ashfield and Bill Nye would have still been in Shaun of the Dead? Or do you think he he met them on this film and remembered them and thought, oh, I'll, you, I'll cast you in something later? Almost it's certainly with Bill Nye. He. I don't know about Kate Ashfield. I don't know whether they would have met before. Well, you know, this Phoenix. is Sam Pegg's first feature film. This is mm. the same year Space Come Down. Right. So uh, now, yeah. he, I wonder which came first in terms of filming. He had already done that episode of I'm Alan Partridge, hadn't he? I guess so. I think so, because that was 97. Yeah. Yeah. I was aware of him from that, but also mm. from the Steve Coogan Man Who Thinks He's It video. Yeah, he's Remember that? Uh, I remember. I didn't really watch yeah, it. Yeah, I saw a couple of them. I but, yeah. from that. He's I, great in the Steve Coogan, I, The Man Who Thinks He's He's in. brilliant in that. But because I associated him with Steve Coogan, he turns up with the family in this. And when he goes, come on, we're on holiday. Yeah, I remember yeah. thinking, you're trying to do Adam Partridge. No, come <laughs> on, you can't do this. <laughs> well, did they offer this to Steve Coogan? And he said no. A little bit that is quite Steve Coogan, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Can we talk about the candle in the eye prosthetic Absolutely. have you seen it's that behind great. the scene this yeah. is something that I think Adrian Emerson goes on about You, it might be a little bit of reference to the shitty special effects right. the TGI because he's going on about how well practical yeah. stuff looks and it's like well it's this thing it's, this thing is this and now we're doing it and so basically they build a fake like a guard over his real eye to, yeah yeah uh, basically with a fake it's a sort of a mask of your eyes over your eye yeah, yeah. if you get what I mean and looks almost a, like a fried egg yeah. isn't it yeah. Yeah. and it's sort of moulded in that skin will blend it in and then so they jam mm. a lit candle into the fake eye that's over his eye and it works really well when it's behind the scenes though it looks mental it looks, <laughs> insane. It looks something like Quasimodo. Igor or Quasimodo yeah. or something yeah. Be- yeah because he's there in the stark light of day outside and you can see it perfectly yeah. there's no like sort of moody yeah. film lighting on it or and anything like that but it's just because his eyes kind of lit, it? literally <laughs> candle lit yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like dropped isn't it so yeah. I often wonder whether maybe when they actually film it Rick's holding his other eye open isn't he because he's been right. already yeah. had candle in the eye so that kind of brings his other eye down a bit yeah. more whereas on that practice bit it's not it doesn't it work there's screams i i feel it's another indication that they aren't our oh, richie neddy because they scream over things that we've seen them deal with it better before like just uh, something as small as a pencil in the eye to yeah. it. <laughs> he's screaming his yeah. head off and fuck me uh, we've gone over one of the most vile horrible things i've ever seen in a film richie popping his uh, Eddie's testicles, testicles. Yeah, oh, and then effects. the other. Yeah. Oh, it's horrific. Right, so, I mean, shout out to sound of the effects mm-hmm. of sound effects in this. And you're right, so both the squeeze around the bollocks and the crunch noise, yeah. but then the reactions from both actors. But the sound effects you get for when those hooks are up Eddie's nose or when Richie has the pencil up his arse and lands mm-hmm. on it. Squelch. You can Squelch. feel those. Yeah. So it leads yeah. very nicely on to the hook up the nose. Oh, moment. I love this that. is um, highlighted heavily in the behind the scenes stuff. Anyone that doesn't know, the hooks going up his nose was shot uh, in reverse. So mm. basically they had it up his nose and then took it out. But then, uh, so Eddie speaks in this scene saying, excuse me one moment, please. Because they're doing this for thing reverse, they he had to say it backwards yeah. and then... Uh, so his lips match up properly. So he's so clever, isn't it? Yeah. And when got, you watch it, it yeah. does sound slightly off. Well, I that think line. they redub it. I, I yeah. think. But if his lips are going, and when it you're watching it, like... you're watching it yeah. closely now. Look... It's Themim Zamanil Zuitski or something like that. Can play that backwards. He was Linuaz Mimith. He learned it phonetically by the sound man. He recorded it, played it back, and then they played it back on on the set yeah. and they're all like yeah brilliant it's, it's well, so, nice. such a simple solution because I think Aid says like yeah. they could have done it in another way but it would have yeah. taken a lot longer yeah. and it, a I lot think more it, money it's a very it's, creative idea it's very inventive filmmaking mm. and it's when you look at it it's actually a very simple way to do it but it works perfectly also with the hook thing I love the I don't know if it is a nod to Titanic but I think that's fucking great when he's like swinging him around yeah. <laughs> yeah. that is like, a, yeah. that's like I don't know if it's been in other films oh, that kind of like being spun That I mean that the being spun has been in a, quite a few I think okay. Naked Gun's done it there's right. Few films where someone is being spun around oh, and you get like a movable you... plate thing in the middle that rotates or something, and like he had fake <laughs> arms attached to it or something. Is I, I can't. It looks great. Compare. Just to go back to the beginning, the thing that you referenced as reminded you of Doc Brown. I had a, sort of a moment of thinking this is quite Wallace and Gromity from both of them. In that Eddie had that contraption that mm. sets off the tape recorder, but Richie on the other side has his tees made that he's trying to oh, use. Yeah. You know, that he ends that. up scalding himself oh, so on. So that's something that was back in the day quite common I think alarm clocks that would make you hot tea now yeah. he references this in Kevin Turvey basically it's a thing that he says oh my alarm clock pours boiling water all over your arms <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the joke he's just misunderstood that's yeah. not 
Te- Tease maids were quite an 80s thing, weren't they? Were they? Is that what they're called? Tease maids? Tease maids, yeah. Tease maids. Or tease maids. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's As what they're called. As in your tease maid. I think it is a tea think... maid. But oh, okay. I don't know if the actual brand was tease maid. Right, okay. Made. Okay. Um, did you, I, I think because it... in Father Ted, Mrs. Doyle gets bought one, doesn't ah, she? Right, she's yeah, really gutted. Um, Take out the misery of making <laughs> tea or whatever. Forgive my... <laughs> Forgive me if this is a quiz question, but did you notice that Richie was waking up next to a copy of A History of Wartime Underwear, mm. which I think is quite sweet considering the abundance of printed and VHS porn in 1998 or 1999. <laughs> He's got a porn collection later as well, isn't he? In the he? safe. Yeah. 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 I didn't notice that of the yeah. wartime <laughs> underwear. Yeah, so he's got day-to-day porn, which is nothing, but all the good, real naked stuff he keeps locked up. But like... Because will nick it or something. Uh, there's a nice behind-the-scenes moment with the uh, vomit technician... What a great job to have on a film, right? It's a great title, a great now, credit, isn't it, vomit yeah. technician? Considering <laughs> the level of vomit and the sprays in that in this movie were kind of then reused and probably gained a bit more fame on Little Britain, mm-hmm. and I've seen it used very well on the Inbetweeners. Was this kind of vomit contraption used previous to this? But I just can't remember what they were used in. I don't remember seeing it in the anything exorcist? prior to this. Did it come directly from them? I mean, is this like a is this like is, is this twenty year old technology at this mm-hmm. point? Rather well, there than... was a review a bit on the poster something that's called this film uh, 40 Towers meets The Exorcist right okay <laughs> that's maybe why I'm thinking of that it's the fact that you can get the spray the nozzle s- somehow right into up. the mouth that really mm. sells it isn't it I think yeah. it's just, isn't it just like, down the side or up the chin or something and when it's spraying vomit so heavily you don't notice it as much and you won't use the angle that you see yeah, the, yeah. See the but it's not off the side of the person's face or no, something like that it's literally there yeah, in, it sort of curves into it so they're, mm. they're literally in the mouth and splattering yeah. they see it on their teeth dripping down and stuff yeah. with all of the crap of odd coloured matter all over the walls and stuff that make you think of the custody underpants. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Similar yeah. kind of yeah. slime gunk, little isn't it? Well, it's, it's fascinating to see how they did it. And I have to say, watching that again like kind of makes me enjoy that vomit yeah. corridor slash gauntlet you could that they of, run down. You could kind of see how they'd been building up to this level of vomit through the previous incarnations of Bottom in that you have some vomit in the TV show and it's a small amount, relatively. Then in the stage shows, they started building things up with sprays. Mm-hmm. Then well, in this bottom, one... Yeah, in, in Hooligan's three. Island, it's mm-hmm. literally from fish as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the same plot, isn't it? That a horrible bit of fish yeah. 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 gives you food poisoning. Yeah, it's but always dodgy fish, isn't it? I love that they're so happy when that fish falls off the <laughs> lorry. Yes. We're saved! Like, we're saved is a repetition, isn't it, throughout? <laughs> all the bottom, really, in all oh. British sitcom. Like, the idea of, we're saved, we're out of this hole, when mm, actually so- you're really not. And with that, I think we'll have a word from our sponsors. Apart from the odd scare of a sugar shortage, a supermarket's turnover is pretty predictable. But here in Sydney, Australia, something happened which took the grocery trade entirely by surprise. A margarine. I've never known a margarine to suddenly take off and sell like it. Instead of buying one packet or one pound at a time, they'd buy a whole case. Within two or three weeks of the launch, it was actually outselling the leading brands of margarine on the market. There had to be a reason, and the simple truth is people couldn't believe it was margarine. They thought it tasted that good. The counterpart of this Australian margarine is now made and on sale in the UK. It's called... Vodka Margarine! There's quite a few callbacks to the stage show and to the actual TV show, this isn't there? Such as Eddie's bollocks clanging, making a noise, or running all the way, and a few other things. Yeah, and I mean, Eddie kind of says righty dokey a lot, doesn't he? Which was weird because he doesn't, he says okie dokey skip, doesn't he? A lot in the show, and then this is righty dokey. We haven't mentioned the Phoebe. Yeah, so I don't understand. I I, I was hoping one of you guys might be able to tell me. I did a bit of Googling, and there is a theory. I mean, it's not from any kind of, it's not from any kind of like proper source, so if any anyone's listening and says that's utter bollocks then fair enough but apparently it's the french word apparently right. it's actually spelled p-h-e-a-e-b right phoebe french waiters used to use it to communicate across banqueting halls it must be that then they would be able to tell the shape of your mouth from across the room and what you were saying to get their attention so i suppose yeah. it would be to stop being a rude kind of shouting out oi or to get someone's attention you'd shout phoebe right um, okay only the waiter would know. That you'd uh, but I don't know how true that is. I yeah. really don't. But it sounds like it's something that would be something that maybe Rick and Aid have been aware of. Yeah. It's an old, old-fashioned restaurant slash hotel. And that's something that the characters usage. would think is posh. And yeah, it right? also completely negates the need for it because he's doing it through the wall. Yes, yes. It's, like, it's, it's a, a ludicrous thing that he's doing. It's, it's it, sort getting of a, his attention for no reason. It's sort of yeah. a posh version of over, isn't it? Yeah. You know, something you say to the other person, but. 
what makes this sequence really good for me is not only the fact that they are literally just on opposite sides of the door to mm -hmm. each other, so really close, is Eddie continually going, hello, as though he can't hear <laughs> <Yeah>. him. <laughs> yeah. As though they're on like some bad phone line. Did you like the Edward and Mrs. Simpson reference? Oh, yeah, I did, actually, yeah. To, yeah. So it's Bill Nye here, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, did we ever learn her character's name? Do we? Oh, Mrs. Hardy? I right, think. oh, that's it, yeah, and he's yeah. Mr. Johnson. So what's the reference for... So he just, he basically, Richie being his snob, because he's already had a go at them for being adulterous, hasn't he? But yeah, he says, you know, nice to be joined by Edward and Mrs. Simpson, which is, of course, the royals. Mm. Some people might not know, like way back when, it was the reason for the abdication oh, and why the, the Queen's the dad... speech, that, that yeah. one you said. so the Queen's the dad yeah, stepped yeah. in because his brother was having an affair. Well, he sure. had a relationship with an American woman who was a divorcee. Okay. Mrs. Um, Simpson. <laughs> Speaking of callbacks in this, yeah. head slammed in the fridge. Yes. yes. Uh, again, Shot so well. Re really seeing good. the light come off an arm and then swapping seeing, them around off camera. Now, seeing them in it, isn't it? It's yeah. like, not the fridge. Yeah. S swapping them around, I <laughs> yeah. thought, great, but they missed a trick here. Black and then like, when the other one. It yeah. should have been literally, here's you know, Eddie being slammed, goes to black, and then Richie, yeah. just swap them over like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That would be good. I like how Richie is nasty and reveling in Eddie's suffering all throughout. Yeah. But then when he's in the fridge, he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please. <laughs> 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 He's like cut this bastard. That's so in Garrett there, isn't it? Oh, I love, absolutely love the squeaky floorboard that does, hits the gas. Oh, yeah. The first yeah. time it happens, it's shot so well that you obviously think, well, that's going to pay off later. But then you forget about it. It's yeah. done brilliantly. Yeah. It's some great classic fast moments in this with the setup yeah. and payoff yeah, there's later. Some, there's some really good moments of fast and some really well written gags as well. Like where do where do your eggs come from? Hen's <laughs> vaginas. It's yeah. such a sort it's it because, sounds obvious, doesn't it? But it's yeah. so well <laughs> it's, it's just Richie being because they put that in the trailer <laughs> yeah. that annoyed like yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, it falls flat, flat. Now because of yeah. knew it's coming, but it is a good joke, you're right. I, I just think on paper it makes so much sense to have Richie as a hotel yeah. Guess the snobberish thing and the, the way he can lord his minimal bit of power over people. When he's dishing out the free sherry to the um, to the yeah. old lady to get her drunk to get... Because mm. they basically, they're skinny, he wants their gold teeth, right? The so, old lady who he's posed which, as a gynecologist before. Again, is a me, bit of a callback. A, a little bit of a throwaway <laughs> joke, but that's yeah. really, really well, dark. Aid sells that by his reaction, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like... Gynecologist, yeah. but yeah, the gold teeth that. are called back, my, isn't it? Yeah, my twin is a such and such, is such a yeah. funny throwaway thing, yeah. scheming this. So, you know, like, Mark, <laughs> it gives him some, her some sherry, spills the sherry everywhere <laughs> as well. So, like, it's, that's all like weird and, and odd. And then yeah. you get Mark the Bottle. So, Mark the Bottle, <laughs> that, that really tickled me. It's like, and also, in that sort of character of Richie is a hotel manager. His stingy tightness comes oh. out. You know the timer on the um, the light. That's <laughs> obviously so he saves electricity. But those, right? those yeah, timers yeah. are a thing, aren't they? In yeah. in yeah. some old buildings and presumably still some hotels. Well, yeah, because you don't it. need the light on in the corridor the whole time. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, it's but a it's nice just little too bit. Short, but, yeah. when yeah. he gets just, to the door. Just like in real life, they never give you quite long enough to actually yeah. make it to where you want to go. But you yeah, you just do... want a little bit longer than you need. Yeah. but they don't. Like you see his stinginess later on when Simon Pegg and his family check in. Richie offers him a complimentary drink in the bar that costs 75p <laughs> pause in advance. each yeah. in, in advance, advance. In advance. <laughs> yeah. now now now, now. Yeah. Yeah. poor Simon Pegg it's the whole British being too polite mm. thing isn't it where like I don't want to call him on this straight away it's that thing of Oh, uh, we're on a shit holiday, but I really want to. I want to make the best of it yeah. for my family, so we have a good time, even yeah. though I know it's terrible. Yeah, because the yeah. setup at the beginning is like, you know, he knows it's a shithole, yeah. but you know, it's I, like we're going to have a great time. We're on holiday, I so love that how pervy that couple actually is. Secretly, which, yeah, yeah, which that's an interesting one. British, isn't it? Isn't you it? don't expect that from them at all when you yeah. see them, especially when they're with their kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right next door, right in the yeah. like adjoining room. That, join is a, door, that is a bit seedy, actually. That they brought all that that gear with them. When else are they going to do it? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, it is kids, definitely a, the most ludicrous outfit. I love that the kids. Um, there's a nice moment where you see in the behind the scenes the little girl with the vomit spray yeah, up, and you yeah. see Aid talking to her as a director, and she's putting her thumbs up and stuff, yeah. and, like giggling yeah. away, which you know must be amazing fun as a child. Both of those kids are actually brilliant. I think yeah. in a way they look genuinely traumatized <laughs> by this nasty man, like screaming, yeah. like forcing food down the brother's throat, and then the little, it's nice close up of the girl crying then and then he's like can 
tight little little girl to her like breaking down in tears yeah. again. That yeah. would be nightmare fuel for the rest of your life, isn't it? Like I went to this horrible place where this demon man yeah. <laughs> attacked me. He's just literally just insane, isn't he? Shout, shouting in their oh, faces. The poke, and poke in the girl's oh, in the eye. Is eye is yeah. F- fuck me. Really fucking vicious. Like you feel yeah. it. Gets the boy when uh in the chest. Uh, oh, it, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Not yeah, the girl. But I gotta feel like he does the girl as well. He definitely does the wife, doesn't he? he? Does the then, wife. I don't remember. And then the girl. she's like, she. Simon Pegg's too polite to take his wife. So I was like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. And it's like, what? Oh god, it's such a over the top fast thing. Yeah. Thinking about the way how they both look in this film, and it's often said that when they know they're going to do a film, they do their best to get in trim and lose as much weight as possible. Mm, yeah. Richie, and I thought this when we go to the fantasy sequence when he's been knocked out. Hello, and, bird. Yeah, and you but, see, yeah. and Rick's face looks, mm. I won't say gaunt, but very slim. And then later on when they're both delivering the New, the nude, nude salad, yeah. they both look probably the yeah. slimmest you've ever seen. Do you think before the film they were Possibly. like, right, we've got a film, even though we do TV and that's always going to be around forever, this is a film we need to get in trim for this. Yeah. When, well, you say slimmest you've ever seen, but they would have been a lot slimmer in the young ones. Uh, yeah, but, like seen naked, think, yeah, yeah. but that's um, but that's youth on their side. Then. Yes, I mean, like I know what you mean in terms of say going from the yeah. live stage show of Hooligans Island yeah. through to this. Yeah, no, I think yeah, absolutely, you'd want to be getting in shape, especially when you know there's yeah. several kind of nudes because you see AIDS are definitely you also see Ricks, don't yeah. you? When the underpants have been kind of blown off. I noticed this specifically on Richie's face in that fantasy sequence, mm. which I love. You love that bit, you? Oh, right. So three of the saucy nymphs have gone on to have pretty fucking good yes, careers. Yes, Sophia yeah. Miles, I think everyone's probably heard of then Emma Pearson and Anna Maidley who have been in a lot of stuff since then but like it's amazing that they've got three very young people who then went on to be pretty fucking big you know and Simon Pegg as well obviously yeah that sequence I love that that's Richie's fantasy um, you know to get birds and then money but then Eddie starts sneaking in on it in a sort of nightmare isn't it it's it's a cheap cider or something which isn't something Richie would fancy out about it. Yeah, you think, well, no, that would be an Eddie thing. And then, then of course, Eddie just starts appearing (laughs) in there. That is a wonderful little piece, actually, isn't it? It sort of had me in mind, because of the absurdity of it, like a skit in Monty Python and the Holy Grail where Michael Palin wakes up in the the castle. Yes, and the oral sex, yes. That's not a fantasy, is it? No, I know, but there's a sort of similarity between the way the the women deliver the performances in both scenes, you know? The first and only time we see someone check in is the uh, the nice family and stuff. Yeah. We've seen it before, Richie pretending to be charming like when he's a shopkeeper the sort of things just to go back slightly on, even on that bit you know when they appear at yeah. the bottom and then they're at the top of the yes. stairs and Looks they so glide creepy. down there's yeah. a bit where they're kind of gliding yes. Richie's manic like <laughs> stare and, and where his kind of... laughter goes on far yeah. too long where it runs yeah. almost it becomes so uncomfortable but then funny again <laughs> because he's go- insane yeah. background thing that was cut out that's mentioned in the behind the scenes stuff where he goes past a uh, portrait of an old right. fashioned mm. uh, Richie which is his old, his great uncle Jervis the, Gervais, no, the guy yeah. Gervais so no reference who, to origi- who originally designed the crawlways in yes, the back of the hotel it's him that hotel. put all of the weird serial killer yeah. <laughs> and I like that he, they even go into the cabinets and things mm. and there's something so I, don't, I can't think like Dr. Zeus or fairy tellness with his hand coming mm. out it's so wall. creepy isn't yeah. it it's like yeah. the people under the stairs the fact that he can get into the chest of drawers yes like being able to access all of these points yeah. in the room. with a series of sort of hooks and things that lock yeah. behind you if yeah. they get knocked again oh, like the kid coming terrifying. in and seeing that vision of the hand out yeah. of the drawer yeah. Yeah. nasty met jam right in the eye and the sound of it and then he's I love that it's like you just think he's in there sweetheart no he's in, he is, he is. <laughs> when, in that moment when he's there with his hand poking out yeah. does it make you think at all of drop dead fred yeah yeah. A little bit when he taps her on the head. Bang. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the fact he grabs the dildo is another great little. Right <laughs> by his fucking mouth as well. And he's not yeah. being pervy with it. And then well. we've he's done not... that already. And then it goes back to him sniffing his fingers yeah. and being disgusted, but actually be really, really That's probably it. happy with it. There's a nice moment when, um, yes, Eddie saved me. Eddie saved me. He's like, and he's like, oh, okay. Just doesn't even need an excuse. Like, yeah, I know what you're doing. Fine. And then sets the thing on fire as a description. <laughs> the, <laughs> the cliff top swing set up. Oh, thing. my gosh. That's I love weird... that. It's almost. League of Gentlemen esque, isn't it? Yeah, like yeah, that kind of like yeah. horrible kind of like setup of like what would happen in a playground, like all the girls just gonna go off the edge of the cliff. <laughs> That's how it's set up. It gets the kid drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Every king's numb. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Would you leave Eddie or Richie in charge of your children? Neither. No. no. The thing God. is, I thought <laughs> the idea that he's taken them off to back, babysit. Yeah, back in and again, the politeness of yeah. the parents. They're just like, okay. Yeah, I guess like, so. Because what else? Let this no random guy go off with the children. Yeah. How game is Rick Mel for anything? That he not only dons the sexy rubber underwear, but then goes through the, the sequence of them being inflated. Mm. I know. Again, that's a sequence that kind of goes on a bit long. But Rick Mel properly commits to that. You know. Oh God, yeah, and that being blown up and everything. As well, so yeah, his skin's yeah. like red raw, yeah. like as red He's as the red undies. Ro- being cooked when the, when Gina Carbonara turns up. That's <laughs> that very reminiscent of the first episode contest the oh, pilot i mean when he's so, trying to gas himself yeah, it yeah. makes me think of that stuck in there oh yeah and horrid. the gas comes on when, yeah yeah there's a moment when he was stuck in the oven when she was stood nearby and i couldn't work out yeah, whether he was trying right. to gasp for air or whether he was trying to look up her skirt well, i think he's trying to look yeah. Yeah. look up isn't he yeah yeah, yeah he does yeah. a legal gentleman nose thing as well with his nose up yeah the yeah glass. when his hand comes above the cook if <laughs> turn it off how the fuck did more. that even work i didn't know cookers could do that i don't think they can't yeah now, I don't want to be mean. The woman playing Gina Carbonara is the weakest thing in the whole film. It's her first film, she says, doesn't she? In it's the her of... first and only English-speaking yeah. I mean, she's beautiful. Film. So she's been uh, yeah. cast for... For the looks. But, but yeah. I feel like it's an odd choice. They could have got I don't anyone know. with a... Mm, I mean, sort of I don't think she's noticeably bad. I mean, like, she's she's acting in a language that's not her first language. Okay, I've worked with actresses who have acted in English as not their first language, and they've been shit actresses. In this instance, I would say... I don't think she's bad. I think she's like, she, she, she's as good. I think she's they as good don't as she... give her that much to work I, with, she, do they, I would, really? I, I would say she's as good as she needs to be in it. But she's yeah. like of another world. What does the, the characters make sense? Like she's well, like, the char- dr- she lives all in a dream world well, kind of thing, the, right? You know the, what I mean? The character needs to be quite naive and quite mm. innocent to not think or notice that Richie and Eddie are total fucking psychopaths. Yeah. You know? And of course, if you're then going to have a villain, yeah. You need to have someone yeah. even worse than Richie yeah. and Eddie yeah. are. So, and he is, rapist. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he is awful, isn't he? So like every three single... prostitutes <laughs> along with his to-be-taken wife. Yeah. yeah, and he's like beating her up, th- slept with three of the bridesmaids the night before the wedding. Yeah. You know, it, they, they've it's really like gone to town. <laughs> this film only has a couple of uh, moments. that I know they do this in the TV show, but that, they only has a couple of nodding to the audience moments, don't they? Fourth wall moments. Mm. Early on, very early on, pissing, when he's pissing yeah. off the bike and he turns around and sort mm-hmm. of, you know, yeah. gives a little nod to camera. Then you have the he's bad. But... And also when she says, I trust you. Right. Eddie, yeah, he looks, Eddie kind of looks down the camera right. lens. Another right. one before as well yeah. when uh, he oh. is being threatened by him. So like, can you watch the swearing? We're trying yeah. for a PG rating. Yeah. Yeah. He says, oh, sorry, father the fucker. And it's the yeah. motherfucker. It's, says, it's a little white right joke, but it's because of the, the comedy over the top accent. It, yeah. uh, it's struggling to understand what he's saying a little bit. I'm not sure. It, the character's odd, mm. isn't he? It's, he does give me memories of Cannibal Tapio D- Jones. Uh, okay. type, that sort of He's yeah. no. two dimensional, isn't he? Like, you're giving him an extra dynamic. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like he's not the fully formed yeah, 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 character. Yeah. You're just meant to hate him. Yeah. Uh, there are several laugh out loud bits in this for me. I mean, the fight sequence in the kitchen earlier on is one of them. But one that is still, for me, one of the best bits is it's not twat, it's cunt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a great, Cause first great of all, no, topper, isn't she's it? She's a tweet. Yeah. Oh, it's twat first. Yeah. And yeah. Damn it, damn it. It's like, okay, I'll remember then. Twat's off. <laughs> Then, yeah, the only C word <laughs> like, I think they say. I think yeah, so. It's the only C bomb they yeah. drop, yeah. And it's a good sort of pinnacle of every time before this that someone has fucked up his name mm. and that his nerves around a beautiful woman are coming so out for, as well. Yeah. Not everyone would know this, but most people would. The twat twat thing is a reference to keeping up appearances. 70s sitcom? Six, uh, I don't know. It's 90s, isn't oh, it? 90s? Yeah, like early oh, 90s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the character was called Mrs. Buckets, but she pronounced it bouquet. Yes. It's a reference to that. Richie finds the very unattractive um, pants, as you say, you know, they're not sexy, they're weird. Oh, this is sexy, I've been told. Yeah. It's that sort of thing, you know. And what does he do? He pots them on. I get a vibe of Buffalo Bill always looking at himself. In the, <laughs> he's tucked you know, his the, dick between his legs. You know, he's just like, <laughs> curving over himself and stuff. I do like the fact that Gina Carbonara was stuck him for a, a weird midget. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Again, how naive she is that she's just taking everything yeah, but at face value. There's something. Well, I suppose she's a sheltered, A-list actor type that's yeah. not fully yeah. uh, developed mentally because she's been given all of these opportunities and things. You know, like the, the that cliche type. Yeah. Of. Of a character. Yeah. I don't know why she finds them charming and endearing because they're so horrible. <laughs> but 
I, yeah, she sort of says well, you're a she, lovely man, doesn't she? Or something yeah, well, to Richie. Yeah. From the moment that she actually arrives there, they're nothing but nice to her, are they? You know, yeah, they're, they're they actually nice very. Really. They they try to be charming, mm. obviously because they fancy her and they want to see her naked. Yeah. But she's actually kind of enamoured with them. A because she's very innocent, but B because they're actually just very nice to her, and she's because, probably used to. Well, yeah, she's been being shitty literally to her. being yeah. beaten yeah. by yeah. her boyfriend. She's yeah. there providing her shelter. Well, she orders the salad dinner time, isn't it? When she orders, when yeah. everyone else is getting fish, yeah. And she had well, she orders the fish, but doesn't eat it. The husband does. What I think might stand out to me a little bit strange: the newlyweds being talked down to so much by Richie when he's like, "Oh, it's disgusting!" It's disgusting. Obviously, yeah. some sort of jealousy there. He's jealous, and stuff. Yeah. But these are things like, "Oh, oh, so unnatural." Like, but what are you objecting to? They're what? married. There's, so you can't be like, yeah. all those two having an but affair. It, it comes out later, doesn't he? Because then he says, I'd like to have a go at giving yeah. her one, doesn't he? So that it's that horrible hypocrisy with Richie, isn't it? That he's absolutely jealous that they've been mm-hmm. dead all day. He'd love to do that. He brings them down, but then later it's like he's actually letting on that he would love to be in his place. It's a very similar thing, again, with Basil Fawlty. It's that sort of British yeah. middle class, slightly repressed thing of... Mm-hmm. These people, the Richies and the Basil Fawlties, desperately want to be having the sex, mm. but also if someone else is, they look down on it. It's disgusting. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't be happening. Well, one of the few bits that stuck in my memory from watching it the first time is Simon Pegg calling Richie's bluff when uh, yeah. he's, I've put some underwear's got missing. He's yeah. like, oh, all right. And he judges Simon Pegg's character by his standards. Like, well, he's going to be too embarrassed. Yeah. So it's like, well, they were crotches little about yeah. Oh, fuck. And then when they watch the um, security tape of it, <laughs> Eddie's over like, hey, look at that bloke. <laughs> It's like, you saw me in that underwear just a moment before, you know it's me. It's always like, you like, shut up. And then it's... Eddie's just so permanently drunk, yeah. he has such short-term That's memory fair. problems. Fair enough. Now, so you mentioned one of these earlier, but I've got to like give massive props to the prosthetics in this film. So not only the candle in the eye, the fake nipple that is like tugged away yeah. from that oh, Simon Pegg has lifted up it, on. Watching the behind the scenes, seeing the body rig, seeing the fake yeah. nipple, I know it's fake. Watch the film again, yeah. still winced and controlled. Still it's makes horrific. me squirm. Yeah. It's horrible, yeah. isn't it? And then also later on, actually, <laughs> pretty good job with Vincent Cassell's fake burgeoning cheeks yeah, that, that are filling up. That makes me think of League of Gentlemen as well. And Not a bit of, sure why. A bit of Python, Mr. Creosote. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Actually, like that entire bit must be a nod. The vomit in itself, isn't it? Is What his fat yeah. cheeks and then saggy cheeks made me think of is there's a famous trumpet player who like played mm. for so long that his when he played, his cheeks would blow out. Yeah. And oh, then wow. Yeah, I can't remember remember the guy's name so he actually is, sagged in that kind of way his yeah. cheeks swell that much why has he got more vomiting in than everyone else <laughs> he, he's, he's full of bile he's already. so determined to not vomit that he's yeah. trying to hold it in yeah, out yeah, of politeness yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that ball that comes out oh that's, oh, that's fucking God. horrible that right when you get the perspective over his head mm. or over his eyes or something it looks like a massive green turd is being burst <laughs> it's fucking disgusting it's meant to be though isn't it yeah like, that's but, what they were going I, like do you think some people do really laugh at that like because i think it's just not really my humor to find like bodily bar Oh, that, that's the real kind of like stuff that entire sequence at the end for me is way over the top yeah. well, once you've seen the vomit gag happen it's mm-hmm. like well we've done it now but like and they're, and they're <laughs> trying to build it, yeah. it up and build it up but it I have kinda... to say it does it did make me laugh on the rewatch this week when the, the newlywed guy comes yeah. to the door and he's like my wife's very sick <laughs> yeah. and like, that bit did make me laugh and the, and the kid yeah, it, is, it is funny when they're doing the vom and then obviously the length of time that Simon Pegg is there trying to just get out get a doctor like, <laughs> yeah. that, was, that, that was, is, that yeah. is oh, funny but you know, it just builds to a point of unbelievable kind of gross one thing I do like in that sequence is the the way you have Rich and Eddie trying to avoid the gauntlet of vomit, like two cat burglars trying to avoid laser beams. Oh, you know, and they like, don't get a drop on them. Yeah, yeah. and go. And like, yeah. so, you know, it's like Catherine Zeta Jones in that film she did where she's like robbing places oh, with Sean Connery. Yes. Oh my God, Rock. what was that called? Oh, Entrapment. Fuck. Entrapment, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, well, it's any of those scenes, isn't it, where they're dodging the laser yeah. beams, but this is like vomit beams. Yeah, or, it's absolutely, it was so well done. Yeah, or like Galaxy Quest, where they're like, okay, we've got to get through this like yeah. contraption. Yeah, yeah. Now, I've got a newfound respect for the vomit scene because I used to, if anyone asked me about Guest House Paradiso, I'd yeah. say, oh, it's great up until the yeah. vomit. That's how I And that's it, how yeah. I felt about it, and that's why I didn't kind of go back. But on the rewatch now, yeah, I've got an absolutely new kind of respect for A, the fact that, you know, they pulled it all together on three million, because it sounds like a lot, but it's not, is it? And it's it was not, before but... digital cameras were mm. readily available and stuff. It's got such a nice unique look to it as well where it's kind of like an, an old 60s it's drama time absolutely trying to 
do an homage to that, I think. Because yeah. whenever Gina Carbonara appears on screen, she's got this kind of backlit, soft yeah. focus, yeah. Yeah. like the old yeah. sort of you know sixties or fifties rub, film stars. Rub some Vaseline, Vaseline yeah. on the lens. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, yeah. absolutely. And you know, they've really thought through every single shot to the point of like trying to get it perfect. I mean, yeah. I don't. I mean, I know you said about the continuity in the opening bit, but uh, well, I don't think there's any other continuity errors, are there? Not that I can remember. In the very first part of the behind the scenes, Aid is like complaining about the day, which is very familiar to anyone times, who's ever worked on a film set. Stuff, in yeah. the oh, it's okay, mm. we've been here for three hours, we've not turned over, and all these kind of things. But it's interesting to see that when you watch things like Rick hanging from the window, mm. the shot looks fine, and you see the nuclear plant in the background. But what Aid wanted was to be wider, presumably mm. so you see more distance between Rick and the ground. Yeah, you know, so you can actually mm. see how much kind of horror he's facing if he yeah. does drop. Yeah, it's worth it. when he falls out the window, I think that's quite undersold, isn't it? It's, you, I would expect. <laughs> The, noise, but it just, he does a couple, doesn't out. he? He's like, uh, uh, and then out. I'd be interested to know how much they shot that they then cut out mm. because the film comes in at a fairly lean runtime. Are there any deleted scenes on Not that? DVD? I know of. Didn't see any, no. no, no. That's one thing I'd love to see. There's no commentary on it either, which one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you've got the making of, which if yeah. anyone listening hasn't watched it, like, would yeah. highly recommend it's on YouTube, isn't mm -hmm. it? I do think it's a, it's an absolutely great piece when you put it all together there are moments where it dips yeah. and it's a bit too long like you say some of the setups and everything but I think you're right like they could have gone bigger on this yeah. movie they could it's have sent them elsewhere the well, it's lacking the plot the lack of plot in the live shows isn't a problem but this time mm. it is I think yeah. it doesn't it feels like some kind of like they had a series of guest house parodies yeah. and then the funny got pulled and they had to put together a movie with three or four episodes worth of footage or something you know mm. it's, a, it's kind of a little bit sketch showy not yeah. sketch showy but it is a series of sketches isn't it if really if, if the choice was to have this or not i'm glad that a bottom movie exists oh yeah if, imagine how much we'd lament it the yeah. same that we do with like series four and everything if there was an opportunity i'd i wish they could have maybe made another one as well mm. and we could have seen the film version of their flat and hammersmith and spud gun and hedgehog and all that kind of thing if they'd yeah. done that though they would have just been accused of not being bold enough, wouldn't they? Maybe. Do you think? Maybe. Maybe. Like, they're clearly trying to do like a 60s thing, I think, because like the car that they arrive in is actually like a 60s Ford Escort or something, isn't it? The Mr. Nice and family. And yeah, even like the military yeah. trucks and everything. I don't think they're like look, 90s era. Yeah, it looks kind of timeless. They're setting it in, way. it's that thing of like, it's a forgotten end of the arsehole. Yeah, right. I mean, obviously yeah. they're set, they've done it on the Isle of Wight, but it's meant to be. Forgotten British end of the seaside. arsehole. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, forgotten yeah. end of the arsehole of, of, of Britain. <laughs> I mean, I've not been on a lot of seaside holidays, but it's, it's an absolute, yeah. in, in the bottom universe. I think I can see why they wanted yeah. to do it. I th can see why they thought it was going to be a really, really great situation yeah. for Richie and Eddie to be in because they've already done them in a few hotels, like yeah. kind of like, and the shitty seaside holiday and all that kind of thing. Like, right? it's and again, like, I think it's an, it's definitely an homage to films that have gone before mm -hmm. it that maybe like they've grown up watching. It's a bit of a love letter to them, isn't mm. it? You know. Did you guys see the Big Breakfast interview that they went on? Oh, with to Paula the Yates. Film? No, no, that's no? for. I think uh, that's for Drop Dead Fred or Bottom Live or something. No, this, there's there's one where they're both on the bed with Paulie Yates. Yeah. I don't know if, if it was that for this or not. The Tarbuck is on this one. Right. They mentioned Paulie Yates in this um, one I'm talking about. Okay. No, now, I haven't seen I it. I saw this when it went out live, and basically they had two moments: one interview on the bed, and then a uh, when they play Mister and Mrs. where they ask questions about the other one while they're in a soundproof booth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that bit happened after the the cut-off point where i'd have to leave to go to school on that day i was staying around my dad's not my mum's my dad went to work and left me on my own so i was like okay well i've got to go to responsible school. parenting yeah gotta go to school <laughs> uh, i'll just watch this oh rick mounds and i do i would have missed the uh end bit yeah of that have to go to school so obviously my priorities were all well, fuck school then today <laughs> and just stayed home and watched it and there's even a bit where rick mouse says um they're like oh there's kids watching and somebody's like oh They'll be at school now, only naughty boys will be watching it. Like, yes, yes, she's talking about me. But it's all on YouTube now, so I didn't actually need to stay. But I'm glad I did stay home because it made me. Uh, so, what do they the like? What do they chat? Is it just literally. They're there to promote Guest House Parody, yeah. so they talk about it. There's a nice moment when they do say, no, it's not a bottom movie. Mm -hmm. Right. They've got the same names, but mm -hmm. they've got different surnames. Which they've done throughout. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you go they back to the say, young ones and they go that, back, exactly. you know, yeah. they, play, they said that we yeah. played the same characters for 25 that's years. exactly where he says yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. They are as they are as different as the law requires them to be, so the BBC can't sue us for copyright sure. infringement. Yeah, because I've been watching Filthy Rich and Cat Flap again recently. And yeah, it's amazing how much it is just Richie and Eddie. Yeah. A lot of it. It's like, so odd hearing Proto Richie Bottom and Eddie mentioning their names again. Yeah, it makes you think, doesn't it? Now I saw when I saw it in the cinema, 
my mate must have uh, been like, okay, we've got to go or something, because I left during the credits before you saw their bar bit. Oh, with other things. So right. I always did think, like, yeah. it's a bit weird that all of those innocent people died. <laughs> right. Well, you, they, let, you didn't see the end. No, they even mentioned, saying, like, oh, it oh is, the only fatality was the baddie, it, so we it don't have to be guilty or something, mm, right? That, that is quite nicely addressed in a sort of nod, nod yeah. and a wink to the audience kind of way. Regina Carbonara is now their sex slave, it seems. There's I a know, sense that, of, that that ends, of obligation. That and she gag of her preparing her fingers. Preparing, that's not... <laughs> Yeah, what an odd... In an inch. <laughs> yeah, but... So now Richie's finally getting his end. The only time we ever see that yeah. it's even further along... Yeah. Than, but their yeah. fantasy has been lived out because obviously the idea of like, tickets to the Caribbean... Are they fantasising now? Did they die in some sort of... Did they actually eat the fish? It could you know, be them in some kind of po- you know radiation poisoning induced coma. You know what I mean? It's too oh. good to be true, isn't it? They're given... Yeah. All you know what? This. But the end of most of these kind of films and sitcoms, like, you know, it's got to be the happy ending. That's no, what no. they've given them, isn't it? No. Maybe, maybe what is cut was at the very end of the credits, it was going to be revealed that, a, that Eddie died in a bike accident in the first two minutes of the movie and Rick's tease made killed him first two minutes <laughs> and all of it since has been that in the moments mm. that, that they're dying it's all been a, a dream or the whole thing is uh, Rick Mal dreaming it in his coma from the quad <laughs> <laughs> but I like that it, it literally is a happy end on a happy ending I think yeah, it's, it's, it's a rich. weak it's a weak ending I feel they mm. could have done even though it's visually stunning I suppose it lets it down for me and the lasting memory of it was just too much vomit and it kind of ended a bit weird a uh, very quick one there's a DVD ROM do you remember these? Yeah. Mm. For anyone that doesn't, DVDs back in the day, you could put onto a PC and you get a little, like, behind-the-scenes videos or Flash games or something like this. And this does have a Flash game, a kind of... A game? A Mortal Kombat-esque... <laughs> Fuck off, really? Uh, Richie and Eddie fighting oh. in the kitchen that's really, really, like, really shit. Really, Are you serious? Yeah, I've got some images of it. We'll, we'll post them oh, along my... with the blog. Brilliant. Yeah. Do you think, like, a version of it might exist somewhere? It's maybe, maybe. It's, it look, the look on Paul's face now is basically you're thinking of... <laughs> the a game that I thought of as a kid basically a destructible atmosphere where they could fight and yeah. hit frying pads and stuff a bottom video game would have I'm been ma- great I'm kind of thinking of like Double Dragon but with Richie and Eddie well just something like there are yeah yeah but something <laughs> oh, where man. you could smash throw them into yeah. the television and stuff like that that'd be great but no this is a, mm. a 2D uh, fixed thing with like just two people f- hitting each other where it's a lot of guesswork and luck mm. yeah. and uh, but it, yeah a fighting game Richie and Eddie would have been great have we spoken about that thing before that's online that's like a boxing match between the two of them oh yes I have seen that it's basically oh, ultimate yeah. Whatever it's it is, it's a wrestling thing where you can design the characters. Yeah, is what and it it's is. Richie and Eddie. Yeah, they've done a great job. Yeah. There's a yeah. great Jim will fit. Jim will paint it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, where they're yeah. fighting the Legion of Doom. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah there's some great, so many of them. There is some great bottom artwork out there. Send it to us if you have any. Well, I'll, I'll, um, I've got it, a screenshot here, so it'll be posted. Let's get a live reaction from the guys of what they think of the uh, the image boxing things. Let's uh, see this. Uh, I'm excited about this. <laughs> it's just basically this. Oh my, oh my god! Oh my god! I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it is naff. It's awful. Why is Why is Richie? Uh, why does <laughs> Richie like look? Les Dawson. No, no, no. He, he looks like Brendan Gleeson. Yes. Yeah. Oh <laughs> Whereas Eddie's pretty good, actually. It's not oh my god! Near as good as it sounds. Oh my god! That is amazing. It's naff. Well, as we're doing show and tell, I purchased a couple of things off of uh, eBay recently. This is the original publicity booklet that was sent out by, uh, I think it was Universal who put the film out. So there are a load of hard stills. Can you imagine that rather than JPEGs? And then this booklet here, which obviously doesn't really translate in terms of a podcast, but we will post pictures, was the Guest House Paradiso guest book, which has the production notes in it. Oh my goodness. How much did this set you back? Oh, like oh, like 50 quid. But like for this right. and the photos. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Uh, production notes are what each film usually does like a little sort of compilation of information about the film and the <laughs> cast and that kind of thing. And nowadays these things are sent out electronically as a PDF. But back in ye olden days, these things were hard copies. Remember and things, the physical world. Remember things. Like, so I'm flicking through oh, this and you've got great. pictures we, we of... Um, these. Yeah, like we'll, we'll post pictures on the uh, social media. <laughs> the there's, there's, yeah, radioactive fish and... Richie screaming at camera and stuff. There's a, bit, there's a nice bit um, we glossed over with uh, their suitcases where they fill them with their oh, yeah, yeah. and Eddie's is just booze. And then they're off like, give me this suitcase, Richie, and you'll get mm. tickets to Bahamas and £10 million. <laughs> and then to Eddie, you'll get the tickets and such and such. And he's like, oh, I don't want to part with my booze. That's a very nice moment. Yeah. And Eddie sacrifices his underpants in favour of two extra bottles yeah. of booze. 
In terms of high points for you guys, what were the particular highlights? The imprinted face of Eddie's uh, on the kettle or something. I think that they dawdled a little bit with the reveal of that. I think it could have been done a little bit better with the editing, I think. Could have just been a little bit tighter, I feel. It's, yeah. it's just a slight niggle along with my highlight there. The the lighting tricks of uh, when the Nice family catch them in the outfits, they yeah. see them in the hallway, it goes dark, and then they put the light back on and they're back in their normal yeah. clothes. It's yeah. like, oh, did you see that? Or did you not? <laughs> like, we all saw it. When Richie is pretending to be his twin dentist, yeah, some, for no reason at all, he's Scottish, just because he mm. needs the character, I guess, oh, is wants it ri- to disguise that he's not... It's, it's not, not Richard Mc. No, no, no. So no it's but different. I but suppose it would be McTwat, wouldn't it? Yeah, anyway, you do yeah. say Muck in there, though, something about yeah. another right. word to say. But it's a, the characters think, well, I've got to show that I'm not me, I'm someone else. Yeah. But why, if you're twins, why would one be Scottish yeah, why, and the other Why not? was one raised in Scotland? <laughs> some, there's such a weird backstory, it's, it's ad lib in there. Have they done that before in something where he talks about Mick Richard? Oh, so I'll tell you what, yeah. what has done a thing where a doppelganger of a character has arrived with a Scottish accent, and that was in Black Adder, where Muckadder turns up yes. speaking with a Scottish accent. But that is actually his Scottish relative, it played is, though, by yeah. a grown accent, yeah. sure, but it's yeah. not Black Adder. No, no, the you, yeah, one, it right? is Mac Adam. Yeah. Yeah. twin. And then yeah. recently, and this time, with Alan Partridge, it was the Irish. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, Doppelganger. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> so good. But the complete standout moment for me is obviously Phoebe. Yeah. I think yeah. that was the bit in the film when I first watched it that I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is actually going to be good. Yeah. Like, the I kids think... at school saying, Phoebe, Phoebe. Yeah. It was like a really quotable bit, wasn't it? Like, mm. really, really daft. And then, obviously, Rick in the rubber bikini. I think, I know it's ludicrous, but I think <laughs> he really, saw... really oh, sells well, they it. Crotch, when he finds out crot- they're crotches, they're crotches, and he knows. Why would you not notice that? They're skin tight, they inflate. You would... How do they inflate if they're crotchless? <laughs> make any sense. Maybe Richie's kind of. <laughs> Flab has added it, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, brilliant. And then I think again the salad undressed scene yeah, where they said, oh, "I love how Aid's chef's hat is huge." Than and then is Richie even a chef's hat, or is it one of those little like kind of white bits of thing that you put on the end of a lamb bone or something, <laughs> or the end of a chicken bone? You know, you like right? dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when they dress, it is that. Like, it is, yeah, a yeah. piece of meat basically. <laughs> it's like a tiny little like flourish of white yeah, yeah. paper. Yeah. Why she's in her own world traumatized that she just kind of like, oh, all right, whatever. Yeah, and that that That's is fine. so horrifically yeah. like. Well, I need to leave right away. Well, yeah. Can you imagine just thinking, okay, well, that well, was that she's was quite like, sweet. Yeah, save me, save yeah. me. When she's on the stall with vomit everywhere, she just didn't want to get dirty. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I don't know. It's a weird character. It seems so. Like mean, she's charmed by Eddie's dong donging bollocks for some reason. Where well, it's what? flattering in a way. No, it's not. But, <laughs> <laughs> Again, sorry, sorry, I thought you meant the erection. Sorry, not the donging bollocks. Yeah. In all of those kind of like sixties kind of farcical comedy films, you know, the women there are there to serve the purpose of being the butt of the joke and having to like laugh politely when yeah. men are being absolutely ludicrous or sleazy mm. or you know any number of like ridiculous things because it's a comedy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she she's serving her purpose, but it's no there's no logical sense to any of her reactions, isn't no, there? No, but she could still be funny with it. What's what's her name? Sorry, Mayhew. Oh, what the actual actress? Yeah. Oh, but she's playing it straight. Doing. She's meant to be doing that, isn't she? Yeah, she she is one of the normal people in this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for me, high points were the kitchen fight, which I think mm-hmm. is on a par with any of the fights in the show, possibly better than any of them, because obviously they had the time and the money mm-hmm. to uh, it's spend all the on props it. and the yeah, breakable, yeah. and the and the, and the ability to do lots of close ups, which yeah. they never did in the show. But that's the thing for me, I think, that makes it it's still brilliant. And it's very very well done, and I've got no real criticism other than that. I think the fights in the TV show. Because you can see both of them doing the movements at the same time instead of the close-up shots. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it feels funnier. Also, for me, candle in the eye. Brilliant. <laughs> and Richie stabbing himself with his name badge. Just the way the blood just starts oh, gushing yeah, out. Yeah, great detail. And very, very top of the film, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so for you guys, any particular... I know you kind of oh, covered, covered it a bit there, Matt, but Niggles? The weird frame rate stuff with the... The model, the miniature work and stuff. Yeah. And it slows down when Eddie's head gets run over, which I think it would have been funny if it had gone at real speed. Do like the look of the hotel with the guest house, Paradiso lights, cutting away and like, badly mm. wired. I know I referenced Beetlejuice earlier. Do you think it sort yeah. of has a slightly Tim Burton kind of-esque yeah. feel to it? Something neo-Gotham and yeah. weird. And yeah. 
Definitely, yeah. definitely. Which is why I think there's a charm to how it yeah. looks with the shit CGI. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah, oh well, yeah, we haven't actually mentioned the um, guest house Paradiso sign being used then to sort of go around the window to s- tell everyone in the outside world oh, that Gio oh, Carbonara is there. Oh, is that for they hack up the sign? Yeah, and it's so made up some of the of letters. Them, some of them are the letters from guest house Paradiso. Oh, that's a good uh, detail. It's and really, some... really good. I think it just says. Uh, I think it's Carbonara or Carbonara is what yeah. it says. And misspelled words. It's there Eddie's well. written. It's like yeah. hurry, hurry, but with one hurry. Yeah. Yeah. So some rooms still available. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sit here at the best table, but then she's on display for yeah. any passers-by yeah. who, yeah. who are zero. All those yeah. passers-by. Yeah. yeah. I th- like the a nuclear power plant workers that come in for a lock-in. I think that's very Eddie that he'd do that. And I like that they've got hair patches missing and stuff from being poisoned by radiation. Yeah, because, I mean, is that, do you think, just like a kind of joke about Chernobyl or just in general? I suppose so. Well, yeah. I mean, doesn't one of them say, yeah, we had a leak the other night or yeah. something? So well, I assume he's... the fish is. Yeah, but yeah, they, that's, that, yeah. they're literally suffering the effects from that. They are, yeah, yeah, yeah. What other plots would you have considered for a bottom movie if... if for some reason, you were in charge of that decision. If, you know what I mean? If for I, some reason, you could go back in time yeah, and direct Yeah, if it wasn't them. just them going on holiday, something, another oh, no, thing. Right, like, so, I'd like to see them do some sort of caper where they have to steal something. Right, yeah. Look, yeah, I'm almost like a heist movie would be quite yeah. oh, good. Them trying uh, to rob a bank or something. But they need a team, so they enlist Spud Gun and Hedgehog yeah. and Mr. Harrison and, and Lady Natasha or something like something that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the, all the call, callbacks and you'd finally see Ethel Cardew and yeah. things like that. And but what they're nicking isn't anything particularly valuable. It's something that ends up being kind of like quite pathetic what would you do Matt? I guess something with Richie already trying to track down their birth parents I think something like that so some sort of road movie wow with those two together you could have some emotional yeah, moments in there definitely see Richie's twin sister <laughs> sort of thing played by Rick, Rick Mao of course and yeah I would <laughs> like to see um, yeah little moments where they find Spud Gun and Mm. And Hedgehog also like on their own adventure that they happen to like find them hitchhiking or something. So, yeah. Right. But do you think that Aid had a very good point that with characters in this kind of universe that they're building, you kind of need them to be indoors because otherwise it does get a bit too big and the laughs are harder to get. Because I think there is something in that, like the very reason why they they do keep it in a kind of insular kind well, of world. Know, that with now and I is they go somewhere still, but it, it yeah. can still feel small, yeah. but big at the same and if, time. And if you had them on a road trip or something, they're still trapped in a car. And, mm-hmm. and, and when they yeah. get to a town, they're still trapped there together, you know. Because they'd have no money. Mm. That's the thing, isn't it? So they'd have to like be... You well, know. they'd hit. They'd, they'd hit so I can get picked up by some dodgy trucker or something. Yeah. Oh my this god! Plot yeah. I pulled out my ass is great. I Rich, love it. Richie would end up being some kind <laughs> of rent boy, Rich, wouldn't yeah. he? Yeah. I like the idea. That Richie would insist on Eddie hiking with him to the top of like Ben Nevis or something, standing there going, "Doesn't it make you feel proud to be British?" And we're the only ones up here. And then you turn around and see Spud Gun taking a piss, <laughs> like nearby or something. By, uh, but do you think that's the point? I mean, they have to stay kind of indoors and insular because otherwise they would be arrested and put in an insane asylum. <laughs> wouldn't they like because that's what's weird about them interacting with normal quote ah. unquote ordinary people isn't it in this film because in their why, universe they're normal but, but that's why not. if you send them out into the world the world they go out into has to be the bottom universe it's not be dystopian the no- yeah, yeah some weird kebab place that yeah does dog meat and e- every- carnival everyone else needs to be a character like amal mm-hmm. or skull crush or whoever that's, you know, that, you know yeah. it's great uh, like seeing there's enough mentions of obscure characters that you never see. I just would like one of their elaborate stories that they've told on screen before to be acted out and shot with a film budget. That's that's all that needed, really. I, and again, I have to repeat myself that I love this film much more than I thought I would. Yeah. I was really surprised, pleasantly surprised. I definitely enjoyed it. There are still certain elements of it that aren't perfect. Yeah. I and mean, what are your niggles, Paul? Because I can't really put my finger on a particular. Yeah, niggle. I can't. There are. Why did it flop? Just because British films are hard to market. And... When did it actually get released? Ninety nine. Ninety nine. But what yeah. month? Oh God! Do I we know? Uh, no. Because that might have had something to do with it. Because well, some it, months are well, worse it, than others, aren't they? I mean, it when got did... it got bad reviews as well. You yeah. know, so people will generally steer clear of something. It pulled out the cinema. Diana, quick, Diana died don't... in August '97. Yeah. Because there's a joke in mm. uh, with someone peg asleep. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like he's asleep. Oh, lady die. Yeah. Smack, smack me up. It was bitch. still relatively new, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. What, I thought that was pre her uh, dying. No, uh, it's not. 
Oh, well, it's much darker then. <laughs> yeah, very dark. But yeah. also, like, Mr. Nice, like, that would be his fantasy object. For me, there's no specific niggles. I think it's certain bits last a bit longer than they should, long after the laughs have been wrung out of them. I kind of feel like the sets are a bit constrictive. Like, you, you feel it was you feel the low budgetness. You know, like, I, mm-hmm. I don't know whether it's just they should have built bigger sets or something. I don't Maybe. know. It was shot in Ealing Studios, Ealing, so yeah. it's technically an Ealing comedy. I guess, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 That's got to be one of the reasons why they wanted to do it there. I guess so, yeah. That or it was just cheaper than Pinewood or Shepparton or something. So sound effects, any particular favourites? I think the pencil up the arse, <laughs> squelching yeah. from S- Rick. <laughs> Screams of pain that are higher intensity than I'm used to hearing. It sounds quite nice. Well, the sound in general, their voices sound a bit weird at first, don't they? When you're kind of hearing their accents on like a film mm. right, stage, yeah. I think. Like, I like all the rickety, squeaky nature yeah. of like the kitchen, or the loose floorboard and stuff. More subtle than mm. in the TV series. There's none that stand out as the screeching, yeah. creaking, oddball mm. things. The popping of the testicles. Yeah. 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 That's pretty yeah. good. It's time for a quiz! Yay! You both ready with your fart noises, boys? Yep, I'm going for quick fart today. And I'll go for wet fart. Fingers on sphincters. Question number one. What is the name of Richie's pervy uncle whose portrait hangs on the stairwell? Uncle Gervais. It's great, Uncle Gervais. Great, Uncle Gervais. But I'll, I'll give you that. I think, yeah. yeah. I think that's Uncle Gervais album. is what yeah. we wanted, yep. Yeah. Question number two. In the outtakes, if you've watched them, <laughs> mm. what does Richie incorrectly say after laughing at the gag from Mrs. Nice about the Marie Celeste? I don't know. And then he was this, was comments. This outtake? Was this in, in the, the be- It's in the outtakes. But was this in the behind the scenes? or It's it's on YouTube. Fuck, I didn't watch it's this. It's not on the behind no, the bothered. making okay. of. It's yeah. on another bit. Okay. okay. So right, should we guess so something? So Marie Celeste is a clue in that he's meant to say that. Right. He says Marie Claire. Okay. Right, it's in okay. the magazine, but yeah, mm. I thought that was quite funny. If no so one's watching, it's what was, what was that It's mean? a yeah. ship that was it... found. All the people on it had disappeared, so the yeah. the tables were set with food that was half eaten, and it's like no one knows what happened to the crew. Yeah. They just oh, all okay. mysteriously disappeared. It's a ship of legend. Oh, I see. Question number three: Who does Eddie blame the kitchen explosion on? Meist, separatist oh. meist. Yes, oh. Basque separatist meist. Yeah, I'll give that one to you, Matt. You're just like nearly getting a word, like. But yeah. I'll give I'll give you it because it, yeah. Because I don't normally win. It's mice. So I feel, it's yeah. mice. No, it's fine. Unless you've got a problem, Paul. And no, 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 no. Should absolutely. No, 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 Were no. you going to say Basque? No, no, no. Okay. I honestly, until Matt said the answer, I didn't, remember, didn't remember, and then I remembered it was Basque separatist. Okay. Okay. So, so Matt got that one. I mean, okay. I mean, if I remembered, I would have said Basque separatist. Obviously. <laughs> if you'd remembered. <laughs> yeah. you, uh... <laughs> okay. Question number four. What is the name of the final song? It's performed by the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band. Fucking hell. No idea. Is it, is it Guest House Paradiso? Did they make one specially for the film? No. No. No, I presume this is a favourite of certainly Aid, because he's mentioned the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band before. Um, it's Jazz, Delicious, Hot, Disgusting, Cold. Right. Yeah. So the film was scored and stuff, wasn't it? It had a decent composer and yeah, things. Colin, yeah, Colin Towns, Colin Towns was the composer. What, have you done anything else of note? He did a lot of British stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. I yeah. can't say that I remember okay. from yeah. what I read on IMDb. Question number five. What are the names, and I want both names, of the two porn mags that Richie packs in his suitcase? Oh, that was neck and neck. Do you... Uh, if it was Neffet, I'd go on and give Paul a go because he's All right, him. I'm going to guess Parade and a Square. Incorrect. Matt, do you know? I say Parade and Razzle. No, I think they're made up. I'm not sure. Right. But they're Dutch Jism <laughs> and Arse Frenzy. I think they're yeah, meant to be yeah, I think they're foreign. Good, they? That's yeah. it. <laughs> they're fucking great. I, you had to pause to be able to sure. properly spot that. Okay, no points there either. We're on to question number six. What four pervy nicknames do Richie and Eddie give Gina Carbonara? No. There's Paul. Oh, I'll give you one of them. The rectum from Reykjavik. Right, that's well, the she final gets about, one. Doesn't she? Maybe, yeah. yeah. That's the final one. Have you got you gonna have oh. any kind of stab Matt now? No. No? Okay. The well, boobs from Belgium or something? Maybe, something no, she's like Italian. So the re- something from Rome, re- isn't it? Re- no, wait, rectum from Rome? Oh wait, no, no, we already did rectum from Reykjavik. From yeah. Rome? Yeah, that's right. So it's melons from Milan, nipples from Naples, ah, yes, rump okay. from Rome, and then rectum from Reykjavik, which okay. of course isn't in Italy. So I get a qu- so I get a quarter of a point, right? No. No. Okay, on to question number seven. We've got Matt with two. 
So, Paul, you really need to all right, all right, get this one if you're going to have a chance of uh, right, a tiebreak. All right, don't rub it in. <laughs> um, okay, what's the name of Richie's fictional deranged half-brother? Oh, Matt. Oh, so it's... Yeah. No thinking time, please. Neville Mom. McRichard? No, Neville, Neville McTwait? No. 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 It's not Neville. Do you know, Paul? Richard McTwait? No, I'm afraid it's Reginald. Reginald M- he does say, it he M- just says Reginald. Okay. So oh, okay. when Richie's being caught and he comes out of and the cupboard. And he beats his... Yeah, his, uh, <laughs> and he says, oh, yeah. that was my deranged half-brother. Okay. And he says, Reginald, I took you know. Oh, anyway. yeah. Question number eight. Which two bottles of booze does Aid choose to pack instead of his underpants? Uh, go on, Paul. Go on, give Paul. you a go. I'm going to say it was Bacardi. No, I've already got it wrong, haven't I? So there's no point in me carrying on. No. Okay. Do you know, Matt? I thought it was Hitchinzano. That's one of them. And um, Uzo? No. Is it Perno? No. No. What it's Lamb's Navy Rum. Oh, I don't even know what that is. What? You know the Lamb's Navy Rum, okay. no? It's a dark, but it's horrible. It's horrible. Right. I used to drink a fair bit okay. of it in my youth. Mm. How do you recognise Hitchinzano? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you want a half point for that? No. Just two for I should, Matt. I, I, should, I should think not if I didn't get a quarter point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You didn't get a fucking quarter point. That's Why not? Ridiculous. Why not? I got, I got one fourth of the, of the answer right. <laughs> okay, question number nine. How much does Richie charge for both glasses of sherry? Oh. What? Go on, Paul. So he charges 75p each, so £1.50 in total. That's right. In yeah. advance. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Ooh. Good I... math. Right, okay, so... Paul, you could you could I, bring I could this draw. back. We're on to yeah. question number ten. We're at two one. How? D- Listen carefully. How does Richie spell Thwaite? I don't know who to go with. Let's go for Paul in case it's a tie break. Go on. T H. No. I How it does up. Richie spell it? He's fu- I fu- Oh, sorry. T W A T. That is correct. Yeah. 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 A, yeah. Say, uh... yeah. So Richie spells thwait yeah. twat because he pronounces it, is, okay. it that way. Yeah. Pronounce, yeah. So that's a, yeah. a little bit of a trick question. So there. that was a little bit. But go on, Paul. You did get it. Pronounce T H A T E. So we're level. Yeah. You're level. So we're on tiebreaker. Me being nice for some reason. Thank you. <laughs> um, so it's down to the tiebreaker. It's more well, exciting, isn't it? Yeah. We Do you agree, Matt? Or are you pissed off? We normally <laughs> don't. Have the tiebreaker actually. I'm amazed. No. I did my it's best. It's been a while. To, I did my best to throw the game away as early as possible, yet here we are. <laughs> the tiebreaker, I've taken inspiration from you, Paul, on this, <laughs> um, is whoever's going to guess the closest. Okay. How many miles, according to Google Maps, would it be from Hammersmith Station to the Isle of Wight? Go on then. You don't need to buzz. Go on. What's your guess, Paul? 150. No. Oh. Yeah, 150. Okay, I'm going to go with 151. Oh, I think I might have won it. Because I thought I it's, went over. It's less than that, yeah. Oh. It's 86 miles oh. as the crow flies, I think. So well, but that, was a, that was a steal from Paul at the end there. Thank you very Good much. Effort. Good quiz. Well done. Yeah. Well done, guys. So there we are. That was Guest House Paradiso. Yeah, we hope you've enjoyed listening. If you would like to share your thoughts or make any extra comments, please do find us on social media. We're at Talking Bottom on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. That is all of the social that, medias that we're on. That's all of them, yeah. Too free. And we're not, you can we're not on TikTok yet or anything like that. No. I don't think we need to do that. No. Or you can email us at 11 parade at gmail.com. And if you can, give us a review on iTunes or wherever you downloaded the podcast. Because yes. for whatever reason, really helps us. It gets the algorithms going haywire. And if you haven't watched it recently, give Guest House Paradise another watch. Yeah, it's yeah. really worth taking another look at it. Yeah, See, hopefully you've watched ahead of its time or listening. something. Yeah. Do you think it's ahead of its time? Yeah. I think so. It just feels now that... I feel I we were too more. young to yeah, enjoy it, maybe. maybe. Little Little Britain got the last for the vomits that this film didn't at the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Which is outrageous. And there's this weird, bleak, desperate, weird vibe this whole thing has. I don't know. I just did not appreciate it when I was younger mm. and was so pleasantly surprised. So now, I think back. it's because we were disappointed, perhaps, that they weren't just doing... Richie and Eddie, as you've always known them. Yeah. Now, with a bit of time and a bit of nostalgia. And it has to be said, like, watching Rick's performance, like you say, like, he gives some of his best performances. And to think that it's only a year after his quad bike accident. Mm-hmm. Like, we're, we're so much more appreciative, I think, now, looking back since we lost Rick, to see all of the work that he did. Yeah. Like, and AIDS as well, but we haven't lost AIDS. We haven't watched... I haven't watched EastEnders. <laughs> some people are loving that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a few little bottom references in these stems, isn't there? Is there? Well, yeah, yeah, there was a things like there was hobnob. And... Oh, right, I've okay. seen it online, people talking yeah. about it. Was he holding a frying pan as well Things at some point? So. Oh, yeah, fucking hell, really? Yeah. Okay. It's either that the script writers are having a laugh and yeah. they're bottom fans, well, or AIDS a bit like 
Can I do this? Can I have right. a frying pan in the sink? Because my fans will love it. There's an episode of Casualty <laughs> that the mum from the in between us turned up in. Right, she was outside the hospital. Which mum? Will's mum. Will's mum. The, the hot mum. Yes. Yeah. She was guesting in Casualty, and in the background, I swear to God, in the car park was a car with, with a different, door? yeah, the different yeah, fucking coloured door. Funny. Like it's just like a, like someone w- must have known that she was going to be on that week and went to get me this car. <laughs> it's a little background in joke. L- little nod. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Well, yeah. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.